Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about graceful shutdowns and a bit of a surprising behavior that I learned uh, from programming is that a so-called graceful shutdown is, is a little less graceful than I expected. Um, but let's jump into it and kind of show what's going on there. So in order to give you some context here, we're going to talk about the finally block in Python. And if we make a little Python script that, you know, does some code here, say, print hello, and a try finally block, and print world here, uh, the finally block ensures that even if an exception is raised inside here, that this block, block of code will run. So if we, you know, run this, let's say we get hello world, uh, even if we were to do like assert false, um, even though the exception was raised, it still ran this finally block before you know, bubbling up the exception. And so this, this pattern can be useful for making sure that code runs. In the same way, you can have a context manager that does a similar thing. Um, and I did a video on context, I did a couple of videos on context managers. I will link those in the description. Contextlib.contextManager. Actually, let's just make a context manager class itself. So class C, which has an enter, Self and we have exit, which takes type, exception, and traceback, which are optional. And this code will always always get run on the exit of this with statement. So we can just do print world, and um, if you return none, I think that lets it re-raise the exception. But uh, so if we do with C, um, it should always print world, even though we are raising an exception here. Um, and even if we do it successfully as well, we'll kind of get this exit statement here. So in a way, there's kind of two ways in Python to force code to always run. That's with the finally block or with a context manager's double enter exit. Now, I was pretty precise earlier. I guess I misspoke just a sentence ago. But I was precise earlier in saying that finally blocks run on exceptions. Um, but this doesn't necessarily mean that they will always run. So let's go over some cases where they won't always run. So first let's um, import, well, let's do one more where they will run. <laughs> if we do time.sleep 100 here, and we run this, python 3 t.py, and if I do control C in the middle, this is going to signal the process with sig interrupt, and uh, Python turns sig int into this keyboard interrupt exception, and you can see that it's still printed our world here. Now, if we instead send sig term, which is usually referred to as a graceful shutdown, let's actually find that process first. This one here. And if we do kill dash term on this process, so term is sig term, which is usually considered a graceful shutdown, you'll see that it didn't actually run our finally block there. Um, and this behavior surprised me a lot when I first saw this in programming, because I was like, oh yeah, term, that's graceful shutdown. That's, you know, it should clean up its resources and then exit. Uh, but the default behavior in every programming language that I've found so far, I'm sure there's some that, you know, have a handler for term and, and make it more graceful than this. Uh, but every one that I've seen, like, doesn't call destructors, doesn't call finally blocks, doesn't call exit in Python, doesn't close using statements in C sharp, like, those, those sorts of things, like they're not run during term, which is supposed to be graceful. Um, and you can fix this if it's important, but most of the time I'm, I would convince you that it's not important. Because if a process is dying, who cares if you free memory and who cares if you close your file descriptors? Because like when the process dies, those die too. So it's, it's not as important, but there can be some situations where you do want to make sure that everything is torn down properly. For instance, if you have like a, a dangling database connection or a, a sub process or, or things like that, you want to, you, you probably want to make sure that those things are cleaned up so that your, your parent process doesn't have to handle that for you. Uh, and in Python, you can do this with the signal module. Um, so I'm going to show you a way to turn this into a, you know, still graceful, but uh, <laughs> graceful that calls our exit box here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the signal module. And let's actually just put everything in a main. That we can be more true to our uh, normal. If name equals main, raise system exit main. 
And what we're going to do at the beginning of our main function is we're going to register a signal handler for a term. Uh, and you do that by doing, I think it's signal.signal, signal term and then a term callback and a callback takes two things it takes the signal and it takes the frame which will be from types import game type uh, I'll double check that in a second but <laughs> and usually it returns none um, but this gives you access to the Python frames if you wanted to I don't know, run a debugger or do some terrible things to the local variables, or I don't know, you could do all sorts of fun stuff in a signal handler. Um, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna raise a special um, a special exception that's gonna be our termination exception. So we're gonna do um, you know, sig term. I'm gonna extend system exit just so it doesn't get caught by normal exception handlers. So this is you know, our specialized sig term exception. We actually don't need any other special behavior here. But we're just going to raise sig term here. And we can actually pass in our exit codes. We probably want it to exit non-zero. I don't know, something like that. Um, but yeah, now that we've installed our term handler here, uh, this will cause any sig term to instead raise an exception. And like I said before, this will get handled by the exception handling code. So if we run this now, Assuming I did my signaling stuff. Uh, oh, it's not from typing, it's from types. I think I said types and then wrote typing. Types? Holy crap, there we go. Uh, does it not have an attribute term? I think it's sig term then. Big term? There we go. Okay, so now it's sleeping. Find that process again, and we can do kill dash term this. And you can see that our our exit block was called here. So now that we've turned, and uh, actually since it was a system exit exception, we get that return value here as well. Uh, so basically I turned the signal into an exception and then the normal exception handling teardown flow ran. And so it was able to run all of our cleanups for us. Now, <laughs> again, like I said, you probably don't wanna do this because like most of the time it doesn't matter. Uh, but sometimes it does matter, and so it's useful to catch these these uh, the sig term signal. The other case that this might come up is if you are a process manager, and this is a rare case. Like I think I've had to solve this twice, uh, once for talks and once for another internal tool, um, where you are managing some other process and you want to make sure that it shuts down gracefully. And what I've found is that usually you want to start with the softest signal possible, which is usually, well, if it's a Python application, that's sigint, which is control C. And so uh, in order to signal it to shut down, you'll say sigint, you'll go send a signal to it with sigint saying, please shut down. Then you'll wait for some time. And if it hasn't died yet, you'll upgrade that to sig term saying, hey, please, please, please shut down. Um, and then finally, if that doesn't work, you will use sig kill. Now sig kill is uncatchable. So there's, there's no escaping. You know, you'll, you'll never be able to run cleanup code for sig kill because the operating system does not give it a chance to do any cleanup. It just immediately kills the process. Um, and, and it can be useful to, you know, step up those signals to more and more powerful ones, hoping that the, the program handles the you know, weaker signals. Weaker. <laughs> but anyway, hopefully this was interesting. This was definitely something that I learned that surprised me, and so hopefully... You can know this now, and maybe it surprised you as well. Anyway, if there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.